Hey, you wanted to get something out there on Revo. So I'm gonna do a number of sections here with different categories so you can kind of cruise through some of it if you want to. Uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is batteries. Revo takes one AAA battery. Um, we highly recommend that you use name brands. Uh, you know, your Energizers, your Energizer Lithiums are what I really recommend using, as well as your Rayovax, your Duracells. Some of those off brands just don't work very well. They can't source the current that we need. So I would stay away from those. I highly recommend staying away from those. Even if it looks like it's working, I would not use those types of batteries. So the easy way to do it, um, so we have the little dovetail connector here. So if I just twist, it comes off. That's kind of important to have uh, just to hold everything together. But we have this clip, so we made it nice and easy to change batteries, give it a little squeeze for the gasket, and then just pull it straight off. Open up the two sides and we have the positive is on the bottom here, negative is on the top, it's labeled on the board. So just work that in there. You'll see it flash like so. And at this point it's charging up. There's some big, very large capacitors in there um, that need to power up and whatnot. So what I recommend then is you'll see there is a polarity on the clips. There's one side that has one little tab right here the other side has two. There's matching locking features on the top. So if you just give it a little squeeze again, slide it on like so, that's all you gotta do to put the clip on. So you're good to go. And of course you're gonna wanna actually put the dovetail back on again. So that is all you do. The one thing I recommend is just press the reset button a few times. If you see it flashing red like so, you know you got a good connection and everything's good. Not all batteries are the same size, so you kind of got to watch that a little bit. So I always kind of play around with them a little bit just to make sure because those super caps can hold the charge for quite a while after a connection is lost or a battery's taken out. That's it for battery section. We'll move on to the next. Next, next section I wanted to go through is all the buttons that are on the Revo itself. So if you look here, there's the reset button. If you press it once really short, press, that is the reset button. Now you have to push the button to rearm the sensor at the end of every alarm. Before on the older products, you could just put the magnet back on, but now with spin detection that Revo supports, um, you have to press the button because after that alarm is cleared, you're gonna immediately go into, the device will go into monitoring for spin messages. So you just gotta push that button. The same button, if you hold it down, is what you use to change LED color. So we got red, we got green, we got blue, yellow, orange, purple, pink, and then the next one is LED off. And then it goes back to red. So when you decide what you want, you let the button go, it's gonna be on red now because that's what I decided I want. Um, the other one is the power button. So now the power button is on the sensor. So if you hold the button down, it'll go to a fading red. Let the button go, it's off. You can check it by hitting the reset button. No flash, so it's off. To turn it back on, you just hold the button again. Goes green. Now it's back on. I can check it by hitting the reset button. So it's back on. Uh, the other thing, there's a one-time pair that you have to do. If you buy them from us with the Connect, we usually pair it for you, but it's simple to do. You do it one time. It even remembers the devices through power cycle. So you just have to do three presses. It says pair three X. So one, two, three. Does a chirp here and I select what button I want it to be. And we're paired. I can check it by doing a pull, push the button, flashes and I get the response. I could also check it by doing an alarm. And I get the message right away. So we're all paired. Those are the buttons on the Revo. Okay, next section is how to flag, do the flag mounting option. So there's a couple different options that we're playing around with. Um, at this point in time, with every Revo, we're sending one magnet. It's a bigger magnet. Um, it's got some VHB tape on the side. What I recommend doing is kind of setting it down right about here where you think you need it if you're gonna mount it lower. Um, we also kind of came up with a way that you could mount it a little bit higher as well. So it's gonna depend on how strong your flag is and whatnot. The Revo is pretty light. It's lighter than most others on the market, but the way that you do it is we got this little dovetail connector here. You want to loosen this white thumb screw on the side 
and basically push it on the magnet. So I'm gonna mount it low, then I'm gonna tighten down the thumb screw here. Um, you'll note there is an orientation. It says magnet down. That's the way that you're gonna to wanna to mount it. If you actually put it on wrong, the dovetail lets you put it in any way, either way, so you can just flip it around. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is set up your, your sensor first and then just kind of find where that sweet spot is where you want the magnet. It's pretty much right in the center. The ideal location is just about the center of the Revo. Um, again, make sure you know the flag or the magnet direction. And I would try it a few times. So I got it set up here. It's working good. Maybe do it a few times. You gotta hit the reset button like I mentioned. It's ready to go. And just check it a bunch of times before you actually do it. Uh, once you stick that VHB tape down, it's a little harder to, uh, to move it. But that's about the ideal location. So I'm right about here towards the center of the Revo. And that's if you're gonna mount it lower. The other thing that we kind of came up with is you can actually mount it a little bit higher if your flag is strong enough. So this is our T-bar sensor, which we use for spinning and whatnot. There's a little vinyl cap on it that's kind of sized to, to meet a lot of the different tip-ups. The polar ones are a little bit bigger. The uh, beaver dams are a little smaller. So with those, it's you kind of need to take the vinyl piece, jam it into the top. There's the bottom part of it where the magnet is, the top of it. You want to jam that into the T-bar, I'm sorry, the T-bar magnet and kind of push it over the top. You gotta push down, and this is a one-time thing. I would always leave it on and just kind of want to shove it in there to hold it in place. I and mean, if you get into a jam, you could always put a little bit of tape or something on it too. But again, this is a one-time thing that you need to do. So the other option would be, I'm gonna loosen this and pull it off and I'm gonna mount it. I'm gonna have to flip it this time because I want the arrow to be down. And I'm gonna basically push it on here and I'm gonna lock it down again. So you could put it way up here as well. You get better visibility um, as well. But basically in this scenario, you don't need the magnet here. We're using the T-bar magnet to do this for us. So if I go and set it like so, you can see it's arming, it's using the magnet here this time, and play around with that as well. So you can see this isn't the strongest magnet, but or sorry, flag, but it still will work for this application. So that's two different ways that we kind of came up with doing it. So the, the next option for mounting is for spin detection. For, for spin detection, we're gonna be monitoring the T-bar, which is why we made that custom uh, magnet T-bar magnet that we showed you before uh, that you could use for flag mounting as well. And in that scenario of doing T-bar monitoring, you're obviously gonna want the sensor somewhat close to the actual T-bar. Ideally, again, you gotta look at the magnet orientation. You want the magnet pointing towards the T-bar. Um, the dove clip does have some little screw holes. We're gonna include some screws uh, in with that kit so you don't have to go and find some special small wood screws. So you could screw it right into here. Ideally, you would be straight in line with it. If you're off to the side a little bit, that's fine. The one thing I would just make sure is that if if you don't have your T-bar tightened and if the fish pulls the T-bar either way, just make sure it can't hit the Revo. Um, but you could basically mount it over here, I'm gonna, over here, as well as in line. So one of the things that we came up with, we came up with a little bracket idea and we're thinking about selling it. We, if you know, anybody could go make this bracket as well, but it's just a pretty simple little L bracket. You know, you don't have to drill into your tip up then. You could basically just put it for, you know, tip ups that support this type of mode uh, right through the, the nut that goes through the shaft here, through the T-bar shaft. So an option that we're considering, let us know if you think you want us to make those. Uh, we can do that. Pretty simple little device though. So I'm gonna show you with it mounted here on the actual, um, little bracket here that we made. So I got to get my orientation right. Again, you want it to be right around centered with the Revo itself. Some of the tip ups, you can take the T-bar and you can raise and lower it. Beaver dams, you can't. So you kind of want it a little bit higher. You can make it work at that height, um, but that was another benefit of having this bracket that we did. 
So basically, that is all you need to do, is you basically have to have it close enough. I would test it a few times again before you actually mount it, if you're gonna drill right into the tip up. Just make sure you got it in the right location, make sure you got the arrow in the right direction. So, one thing that is a little bit different with spin messages, which I mentioned earlier, is it's gonna go off and send that same alarm as before. So that same alarm, that magnet alarm that happens first, that's the same alarm that we've sent since day one. So we made sure it was backwards compatible. You can use Revos with the older sensors. The only thing you don't get are the spin messages. They're new to the Connect handheld. So the Connect handheld knows those messages. Uh, the Connect handheld, the firmware can be updated over the air. So that's kind of one benefit of the Connect. Um, as well as obviously you can push messages messages into your smartphone if you choose to do so. So when it goes off, you get that same message like I mentioned, you have to clear it. So once I clear it here, now I'm in spin mode. So you can see it's visually flashing blue so I can add a distance C, but I'm also sending these spin messages, which is kind of cool. So that's Revo itself. <clears throat> the last thing I wanted to cover is checking for periodic firmware updates. So. Um, if you use the app, every time you connect to it, it'll automatically go and check to see if there's a new firmware update. Um, but if you use standalone mode, I would just connect to it every once in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my handheld. Uh, you can see here I got the blue LED in the center. That will stay on for three minutes. So you have, after you turn the power on, that light will stay on for three minutes. You have three minutes to connect to it. If you don't, it'll turn off and the Bluetooth is off so you can use it in standalone mode. So what I'm gonna do, you'll see it in the split screen here, is I'm gonna go scan for a handheld. Um, it's going through and doing it right here. You can look in the other screen to get a better view of it. And once it connects to it, the way the device works, this is the first time you connect to it, you have to go do that. After every other subsequent time, remember your handheld. Um, but it'll go ahead and see if there's a newer version of firmware available uh, for the Vulture system. So right now it said handheld firmware, new firmware update is available. Go to settings and get it. So I'm gonna go do that settings. Uh, now you can see it goes to a blinking sequence, which it'll do every time you're connected to it. And I'm gonna go update handheld firmware. Check for update. And it basically says there's a new firmware version. Do you want it? And I said, yes. So it's going ahead and doing it. You can see the progress bar here. Usually it takes about 10 seconds, I believe. Um, so it's going over and just about done. Once it's done, you'll basically see the handheld reboot and we're good to go. And at this point, uh, for the handheld, it reconnects to it and it will verify that it took the firmware update. So it knows what it should be and does a check and it's just about done. It says you now have the latest firmware installed on the device, so you're good to go. So now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do the Revo. So every once in a while, I would check the Revos just to see if there's latest. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Revo. And with, same with the handheld, you have three minutes to connect to it. Uh, so he's on right now, Bluetooth will be on right now. So I'm gonna go under settings, and I'm gonna go update, I'm sorry, sensor management, and scan for sensors. So I have this assigned to button number one. So in a little bit here, you're gonna see it show up as uh, Revo sensor number one. So you can see it in the split screen here. Scanning, and you'll see Vulture Revo one, it has version 1.1.2 update, and it's red. If it's red, that means there's a newer version. It knows there's a newer version, so you should go ahead and get it. So I'm gonna go connect, update firmware. He flashed blue for a second, so that kind of tells me that it's going and talking to it. Uh, you can see it's doing the update firmware, and shortly here, you will see it flash completed and flash green. So that way I know it happened. So right now it still shows it as uh, red, but if I went back and I went sensor management, scan for sensors again, um, you will actually see that it took the new version and it'll show it through screen. So I would check that periodically just to make sure you have the latest and greatest. So now you can see it's version 1.2.0. Uh, it's not green, but um, it's not red anymore. I apologize for that. Anyways, that is it. So um, any other questions, reach out to us at vultursystems.com uh, or leave some comments below. Appreciate it. See ya.